Good morning again everybody and thanks for joining our Bible class and Sunday school lesson again this morning. It's about week 9 or 10 of, since we've been at Sunday school now and I was just thinking this morning and over this past few days uh, things that normally would be happening at this time of year. Normally the football season for all you football fans would be coming to an end now this time of season. And Man United would be winning the league as usual. Um, the Balmoral show would normally be over, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would just be finished. Everyone would probably be, probably be planning the summer holidays as well now. Yeah, where you're going in the summertime. And we would all be practising for Children's Day. But unfortunately, as you know, none of these things are happened or have happened. But nonetheless, what we have to do, and I think what God wants us to do, is to be patient, to keep trusting him, and trusting him that normality, or a certain amount of normality, will come back for you young people, and for all of us, as soon as possible. Now last week in our lesson, we looked at the persecution of the Christians, and we looked at how Stephen, uh, at the end of the martyr, that was, became the first Christian martyr when he was stoned to death, for simply preaching the gospel. And we, we talked about how we need to be strong. We need to be like a Stephen. Uh, we need to stand up for the Lord Jesus. Now, uh, today we're going to look at how this persecution actually brought about the spread of the gospel. So it be, out of something that really bad, something really good came to pass. Many of you will have heard the story, and your mums and dads will remember this story, how back in the 4th of August 2002, two little girls by the name of Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman uh, disappeared after having a family barbecue. They went to buy some sweets uh, in the middle of the day and they completely disappeared. There was a, a, a hunt for them, there was a search for them and two weeks later, unfortunately, those two wee pets' bodies were found um, and they had been murdered. They had been murdered by, above all people, the school caretaker, a man by the name of Ian Huntley. This was an awful tragedy. But out of this tragedy, the government brought in a new law, and it was called Holly and Jessica's Law. And what it was, was it meant that everyone who ever worked with children had to have their name on this national database and that people could know straight away and especially schools could know straight away when they're interviewing people for a job if this person has a criminal past and that could immediately knock them out from that job because that man Ian Huntley who murdered Holly and Jessica had a criminal past but nobody was able to search it up or check it out. So out of the deaths of those two little pets came this good thing, came this law, there we law, Holly and Jessica's law, that made it impossible for someone like that to ever work with children. So we're going to, in a different way, we're looking today at how good came from bad, how the spread of the gospel came from the church being persecuted, just like what happened for Holly and Jessica, that the wee law came about after their terrible death. Now let's read together a few verses uh, to, to meet out this a wee bit in Acts chapter 8 verses 1 to 4. Okay, so Acts chapter 8 um, and we're going to read the first four verses. And Saul consenting unto his death and at that time there was great persecution against the church was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So, poor Stephen had just been stoned to death. Then we see the introduction of this man called Saul. A big character in the Bible. And you'll be hearing lots more about Saul from now on. But we see the first real introduction of this man, Saul. Saul was a wicked man. Saul was a man whose main aim was to hurt the Christians. 
was to cause them as much distress and trouble, throw them in prison. In fact, Saul was standing there watching as Stephen had been stoned to death. Saul apparently held the coats of the people who were doing it. So Saul consented to Stephen's death. He hated Christians. Saul's heart was full of sin. Satan had control of Saul's heart, no doubt. I wonder, is your heart, young person, full of sin? I wonder, does Satan have control of your life? You might say to me, but, but you know, I, I don't deliberately go about to do bad things or, you know, I don't deliberately go against God. But young people, unless you're saved, I'm telling you this morning that Satan does have control of your heart. You see, Psalm 51 verse 5 tells us that we all born in sin. It says, in sin did my mother conceive me. You were born in sin. And the Lord Jesus went all the way to Calvary and he took the punishment for your sin on the cross with him. And unless you deal with your sin, it will take you to hell. But what you need to do and what everyone who's not saved needs to do is repent. Call out to Jesus, thank him for, for dying on the cross, ask him to save you. And he'll do that. He will do that today. So the persecution of the Christians uh, had them running for their lives, right? All the, the difficult times that Saul and the other uh, people were putting the Christians through made them run for their lives. The result of this here is that they scattered throughout the country, throughout the land. And, and that meant that wherever they went, the, the apostles, or not the, but the, the disciples of Jesus, they were all bold and they continued with, with endeavour in their heart to preach the gospel. Do you remember uh, at the start we talked about wee Holly and Jessica's story? Well, we can see here a similar theme happening whereby something good is coming out of something terribly bad. Where the Christians were being persecuted, they had to flee for their lives. But where they went to, then they preached the gospel. They took the gospel with them and spread it throughout the land. Isn't it amazing how God works? Isn't it? What about you? Are you like the, the disciples this morning? Do you feel worthless? Do you feel like the world is, is laid upon you? Do you feel like a black cloud over you? Do you feel that things have been difficult? Have you maybe got it hard at school or even in your family for standing up for Jesus? Well, I want to tell you this morning, just like what happened here in the early church, God can bring good out of your difficult circumstances. Do you see even young people or adults listening? Do you see what you've been going through? Maybe you don't even understand it. No one understands the pain and agony you've gone through. Well, the message for you this morning is keep going. Don't get discouraged. God will bring something good out of your pain. There's a wee chorus, and many of you will know it, and the words of it are lovely. I'm just going to read the words to you. I want you to think about them. It says, Are you discouraged and are you blue? Are clouds obscuring the sun from view? Keep trusting Jesus, though storms assail. You have his promise, he will not fail. And the chorus reads, It's always darkest before the dawn. Don't be discouraged, but carry on. He'll not forsake you. The sun will break through. It's always darkest before the dawn. And verse 2 reads, it's lovely words. He knows your heartaches and he understands. Just put your problem in his great hands. No trouble meets you, but in his will. Oh, he's not forgotten. He loves you still. Young people... I go through difficult times as well. Your mums and dads, the, the, the ministers of the church, all our, our churches throughout our land, good godly people go through difficult times. I've been through hard times in my life, but I've learned through the hard times just to keep going, keep trusting in God and keep going and, and watch as God brings something good out of something bad. Now we're going to look now at one specific story, just quickly as we finish, of one man, uh, his name was Philip, who fleed uh, persecution from Jerusalem and how he spread the gospel. And it's the story of the Ethiopian eunuch, and many of you will have learned it. 
Now we're just going to read a couple of wee verses here in Acts chapter 8. So if you we'll move on that chapter a wee bit. Acts chapter 8 and we'll read uh, verses 26 to 31 and then 35 to 38. So, and the angel of the Lord, Acts 8 verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopia, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said unto him, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Verse 35 says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And we just then read on about how Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch. So Philip here was heading uh, from Jerusalem, fleeing from Jerusalem to a place called Gaza. And he was going through a desert area. And he saw this man um, in a chariot. And, and, and this man in the chariot was a really important man, the Ethiopian eunuch. He had a really important job working for the queen of Ethiopia. So Philip noticed the man was reading. He ran over to the chariot. He was reading the book of Isaiah. He ran over to the chariot took his taking his opportunity to preach the gospel here he was and he asked the man did he understand what he was reading and the man said no except somebody show me and philip took that opportunity then to preach the gospel to that ethiopian eunuch in verse 37 then we read how the ethiopian eunuch responded to the gospel he got saved and then verse 38 he got baptized you see, then Philip was whisked away by the Holy Spirit to continue preaching the gospel in other areas. The Ethiopian eunuch, then it says, he departed rejoicing. But notice what's happening here. Can you see what's happening? Philip had spread the gospel to this Ethiopian eunuch on his travels as he was, as he was fleeing Jerusalem. This Ethiopian eunuch, no doubt, then took the gospel back to Ethiopia and, and it hopefully and no doubt spread through Ethiopia just as a result of the persecution that came from Jerusalem isn't it amazing how God worked through the whole situation God used the persecution of Christians to see the spread of the gospel you know we're not persecuted like the Christians sure we're not we don't go through hard times as they did back then but do we spread the gospel do we spread it to our neighbours? Even doing a kind deed. We could, during this coronavirus situation, the lockdown, we could, we could drop a wee parcel off with our elderly neighbour. We could send a wee message to a friend who's struggling. We, we could spread the gospel. We could be a witness in many different ways during this time. We can all do something. We can all do something. The stories uh, of Corrie Ten Boom, it's an amazing story of that lady who during the Second World War, who with along with her sister and her father, hid many Jews in her house from the, the Nazis who wanted to take them and kill them. Eventually the house was raided and, and Corrie Tenboom and her sister and her father were put in a concentration camp. And it was an awful, awful time they spent there, the persecution, the, the trials they went through, the abuse they suffered in there was terrible. In there, uh, Corrie's father died and her sister and her really, really struggled. But what they continued to do even in there was preach the gospel. But, you know, when Corrie Ten Boom got out, Corrie Ten Boom sent the, spent the next 30 years using that hard time to go around the world preaching the gospel to 61 different countries. Corrie Ten Boom saw how something good preaching the gospel throughout the world came from something bad her terrible experience in the concentration camp we can all be like Corrie Ten Boom 
we can all bring the gospel and spread it to those and to anyone we meet. Let's everyone really make a decision today to use whatever circumstances we're in to spread the gospel, to tell others about Jesus, to be a witness to other people as God would want us to do. Let's pray. Lord, we commit this uh, day to you and we commit each young person to you and anyone who's listening. And we pray, Lord God, if they're not saved, that you will save them, that you will help them to realize that you died for them. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that those of us who are saved, that you will help us to spread the gospel and to take the gospel with us wherever we go. Give us opportunities, Lord, along our pathway to spread the gospel for you. Be with us all now and bless us and undertake, Lord, for even the, the drive-in service tonight. We pray in your precious name. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for listening. God bless and I'll see you next week.